filled with encouragement because you've got a good week ahead. But God is able to do above and beyond what we can even ask for. Amen. Okay, okay. Now, in your notes today, um, I want to talk about just one experience of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3, 16 and 19. I am believing that the Holy Spirit can do something in us today. The Bible speaks about strengthening us on the inside so that we might get a greater vision of how wide, deep, long, high is the love of God for each and every one of us. I really want to believe that today. And I want to look at one amazing thing in the scriptures today. And I want to encourage you. And if you're broken, if you're discouraged, if you're shaky, I want, to, I want the Holy Spirit to do something amazing in you. And I'm believing today, I'm going to say it again and again, I'm believing, and I want you to write this down, I think I've even left a space there, you might have come in empty, I want you to leave in full, I want you to write that word down, full, everyone say full, come empty, but leave full. I left full at Hillcrest the other day, I, I did the grade 3 chapel, and we just had a great time down there, they were so quiet. 4,000 kids, and they're all just really super quiet, and we spoke about the peace of God, but I left feeling encouraged. And that's what I want to see you guys, to be encouraged. And we're going to look at Acts chapter 6 today, if you've got your Bibles or your iPads, eyelids, open them up, Acts 6, verses 8 to 15. We're going to talk about a guy called Stephen. And we don't talk about this guy a lot, we don't, we don't speak about him a lot. But he's a, a guy of outstanding character. The Bible tells us in the first few verses of Acts chapter 6, in the opening verses, that there was a problem in the church, that people were not feeding all of the widows. They were showing favoritism. So the apostles said, stop. We need to appoint a group of people who will take care of this responsibility so we can preach and we can continue to pray for people. And so one young guy called Stephen. There's a whole lot of other guys there that are listed, but this one guy, young guy called Stephen, he was chosen and he served food on the table. Man, Fiesta, coming in a few weeks' time, we're going to have some food on the table. Everyone say Fiesta. I think it's in your notes this morning. Fiesta. It's in your notes? There it is. Two weeks' time. I love Fiesta because you guys bring along some of the best food and we're going to be outside in the car park and having music and fun and Justin's going to teach us how to do some dancing. <laughs> so this guy, Stephen, he, um, he was feeding some of these poor widows. He's not an apostle, but he starts to preach and to teach. And in verse 8, the Bible describes him this way. The Bible says in verse 8 that he was full of God's grace and power. I just love that description. The word grace is the favour of God. And here is a young God full of the favour of God and of Holy Spirit power. I pray that that's, I pray that when you describe the person on your right and your left, that that would be a description that we could use for each other. Full of God's favour and full of God's power. Right? Not full of cynicism, <laughs> not empty but filled with God's grace and his favour and his power but in verse 8 it also says something else that Stephen did great wonders and miracle signs this is a young guy he's not, he's not an apostle and what is a wonder? a wonder is something when God does a miracle that points towards himself and a wonder is this a wonder is something where people just go what just happened? And here's this young guy, Stephen, performing, praying for people, and God does these miracles through this ministry, and then he goes back and serves on, on the guitar, or serves uh, cappuccinos on the barista machine, just an ordinary, everyone say an ordinary guy. Ordinary. Have you got a hold of that? He's, he's not an apostle. He's not someone important. He's just one of a bunch of guys who are serving. But there was grace on his life and power in his life. How many people want more grace on their life? Eh? 
to be able to do what you are called to do, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a student, whatever your calling in life is, to have that grace and that power on your life. And he had it. And it's quite interesting. He's preaching. Miracles are happening. And in verse 9, look at your Bibles in verse 9 of Acts chapter 6. What normally happens is opposition arose from a group of people called the freed men. And these were ex-slaves who had, got, who had come into Judaism, former Roman slaves, and they became Jews. And they are opposing the good things that are happening in life. Now, isn't that true today? You know, there are people who will oppose the gospel regardless of what you say or you do. And today, you know, I'm finding that a lot of people are criticising Christianity but often have very little understanding of Christianity. And they kind of pull it down to a little comment, you know, like your invisible friend, your fairy in the garden. I don't know if you've seen those sort of comments, but it shows and displays a very poor understanding of the entire gospel completely. And people will always criticise Christianity. It's part of life. And when you start to do something for God, you will be criticised. And we've got to get used to that. You know, people say there's no evidence that Jesus existed. Every time I hear that argument, I just say, well, do you know anyone? What's the evidence that someone who lived 100 years ago? Oh, well, there's, there's a book. There's a story. Well, okay, let's go back 500 years. What's the evidence? And we go, and I take them back and back and back until it comes down to documentation, eyewitness, and so forth and so on. It's an easy argument. But people sometimes don't want to hear a response. Okay? And these guys were like that. You know? And in verse 10, it says, They, the freed men, ex-slaves, who become Jews, they couldn't stand... Now look at verse 10. I want you to look at it. I think it's in your notes there. They couldn't stand up against Stephen's wisdom... They wouldn't say wisdom, or the spirit by which he spoke. Have you noticed that? He was speaking, he's a young guy who loved Jesus, and he had gotten full of grace, full of the Holy Spirit, and there's this wisdom over his life, and an anointing through the Holy Spirit. Now when you're testifying about your faith, and your, or you're witnessing, or you're sharing with someone at work, or one of your friends, um, it's not just a matter of saying the right thing, is it? Because when we look at this verse, it's actually a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle which requires wisdom and Holy Spirit power. So sometimes, when you're sharing your faith, wisdom says, wait. Wait until the other person starts talking so you've got a basis to respond to. Wisdom says, share carefully. And the reason why I say that is because here is a guy, he was sharing, and there was a, an angry response, but they couldn't respond back to him. Got that? They were unable to respond back to him in any form of argument or discussion. Why is that? Why is that? We, I believe that we all need, we all, all need this wisdom and the right application of the Holy Spirit's wisdom every day. Because when we do that, we're able to communicate clearly. Just look at me for a moment. A lot of people in our world have a worldview that is often against the gospel. And they are sedimentary in that worldview. And you can talk to them as much as you want. But because they are solid in that worldview, they may not listen to you at all. That's why you need the wisdom of the Holy Spirit in order to find the right timing and the right words to say to them. You can share with them, it'll be rejected, you'll get an opposition, and that's okay. But you don't want a wall to go up. But you keep saying, Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me and what I'm to say. Even, um, we caught an Uber Recently, Alex caught an Uber recently in Sydney because it's cheaper to catch an Uber rather than go via the train, which is through the tunnel in Sydney, 32 bucks. 
and he had all these Transformer little figures on the, on the dashboard. And I go, hey, you like Transformers? He says, yeah, yeah, I love Transformers. I said, oh, you got any kids here? Is this, oh, I said to him, is this your kids or yours? He said, no, no, they're mine. <laughs> and he's a guy from Hong Kong, you see, he's starting out. He was starting out with a degree in engineering here. He's driving an Uber. And I thought, hey, and we, I got to know the guy a little bit in our journey. And we talked about Transformers, about on that. And I said, oh, and how many kids do you have? Oh, I've got a boy, he's 14. And I said, oh, how's that going? He says, I can't get him to study. <laughs> oh, right, okay. And uh, what, does he spend all time on a tablet? Yes. In his room locked? Yes. And we had this discussion, which was going on and on and on. And then I'm trying to use a bit of wisdom here. And I said, well, you know, uh, my wife and I were in the car. I said, you know, my wife and I, you know, we run a church on the Gold Coast. Oh, the gospel. Yes, the gospel. Okay, okay. Okay. And, uh, you know, what, what you're experiencing is very... Other parents experience that too. But you need a bit of wisdom on how to build your relationship with a 14-year-old, which is not easy sometimes. And we spoke about that. And we spoke about how to, how to move around it. But he didn't object to me saying I was a pastor. I was waiting for it. But then we kept talking. What I'm saying to you today is we need that wisdom of the Holy Spirit power. Okay? Because we've got mindsets that need to be broken. We all need that today. And can I go a step further? In your notes is Colossians chapter 2, verse 3. It says this. A lot of people live by feelings rather than facts today. I feel this is right. I feel this is wrong. And it's not based on any fact at all. But we as believers, we've got something else. Colossians 2 verse 3 says, The mystery of God, namely, Christ in whom are hidden all, everyone say all, all, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And I tell you this, look at this, look at look, look what it says. I tell you this, so that no one may deceive you by what? By fine-sounding arguments. So Colossians is telling us quite clearly that we need to rely upon Christ through the Holy Spirit more and more in order to communicate clearly. He is the source of all knowledge. Have you got a hold of that? The implication of that is there is other knowledge, and if you pursue that, it may not be as anywhere as valuable as what you get in Christ. So the question I ask is how much and where are you in terms of your walk with the knowledge of Christ? Hidden doesn't mean concealed. It means it's deposited in Him and it's available for all of us. So, this morning... Here is this young guy called Steve. He's an ordinary guy, but somehow his walk with Jesus had given him knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Who, who, who wants more of that in your life? Oh, do you want more of that in your life? You know, wisdom. You know, you're, at, you're, you're teaching at professor level university, and I guarantee you'll have students who don't believe in God, and they've got all these arguments and... Yet God is able to give you great wisdom and to navigate and, 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 and great knowledge. By knowing Jesus more, you're able to talk with him more. And Tracy, you know, you're, in, you're, you're with grade, what, 10, 11s and 12s and they're all 10 feet above you and they are asking you some really tricky questions. And some of them, those questions they're asking and, 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 and you need to say, God, I need to know your knowledge more so I can apply your knowledge because they're coming from a worldview which is based on music, movies, pop culture and what they see as fair and we're coming from a position of the knowledge of Christ of which we are told in Colossians it's all there. And we've got to be able to respond with wisdom and the Holy Spirit anointing at the right time. Can anyone agree with that? And look at the next Bible verse. I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish very soon. How many people believe that today? Three. Okay. Okay. 2 Peter 1, 5 to 8 says this. I'm just going to jump a little bit here. And it says this. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith 
with generous provisions of moral excellence and with moral excellence add knowledge and with knowledge self-control and with self-control patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and with godliness brotherly affection and with brotherly affection with love for everyone now listen to this here's the, here's the knockout punch the more you grow like this the more productive and useful you will be in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So you've got to be able to say, God, I want to grow in my knowledge of who you are. I want to be able to share a 